Geography Historical Case Unit to provide an update on the 17-year-long investigation into the homicide of Misha Pavlik. Following Sergeant Major Milo's remarks, Mr. Lauren Pavlik, Misha's father, will be providing a statement on behalf of the family. We'll conclude with a 20-minute questions and answer period from our news agency partners. Those with questions are in invited to line up at the microphone stand over here. I'll now repeat these remarks in French before inviting Sergeant Major Milo to speak. Bonjour à tous et merci d'être là. Je suis le surintendant principal Tyler Bates, chef du district sud de la GRC de la Saskatchewan. Je serai l'animateur cet après-midi et je fournirai la tradu traduction française de la déclaration. Nous commencerons par une déclaration du sergent major Daryl Milo, officier responsable du groupe des affaires non résolues de la GRC de la Saskatchewan. Que ferait le point sur l'enquête qui dure depuis 17 ans sur l'homicide de Misha Pavlik? Après le discours de sergent Milo, Mr. Lauren Pavlik, le père de Misha ferait une déclaration au nom de la famille. Nous terminerons par une période de questions de 20 minutes pour les agences du presse partenaire. Les personnes qui ont des questions sont invitées à faire la file au microphone ici. J'invite maintenant le sergent-major Daryl Milo à prendre la parole. Daryl. Thank you, Chief Superintendent Bates. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize Misha's father, Lauren Pavlik, who is here today, and acknowledge Misha's mother, Susan Martin, and Misha's sister, Kathleen Marshall. I cannot begin to imagine how difficult these last 17 years have been as you waited for answers following the tragic loss of Misha. Thank you. Your strength and cooperation over these years has been integral throughout this process. As many of you know, the Saskatchewan RCMP Historical Case Unit has been actively investigating the homicide of 19-year-old Misha Pavlik, which occurred on May 21st, 2006, at a campground near Regina Beach at Last Mountain Lake. The question, who killed Misha Pavlik, has haunted many as family, friends, and the public, and our own investigators sought justice. Since then, Investigators have committed to working diligently to make an arrest on this case, lay charges, and hold someone accountable for Misha's death. To date, RCMP investigators and specialists completed over 200 witness interviews as part of their investigation, gathered evidence, and processed crime scenes. This investigation has made front page news across Saskatchewan, and it was the subject of the RCMP's first ever podcast as an innovative attempt to spread awareness of this investigation and to solicit any piece of information from someone who may have been holding on to. On Saturday, June 24th, 2023, a 34-year-old adult male was charged with one count of second-degree murder, contrary to Section 235, Sub 1 of the Criminal Code. He was arrested in Regina by investigators from the Saskatchewan RCMP Historical Case Unit without incident. He is scheduled to make his second court appearance in Regina Provincial Youth Court on July 17, 2023. Since the accused was a youth at the time of this offense, we are unable to release his name or provide any further details which may identify him. Throughout the investigation, the Saskatchewan RCMP Historical Case Unit was assisted by investigators from the Regina RCMP General Investigation Section, Federal Serious and Organized Crime Unit, Saskatchewan RCMP investigators in surveillance operations, along with officers from the Lumsden, White Butte, Carlisle, and Pelican Narrows RCMP detachments. We have also received assistance from the Alberta RCMP. To date, there have been dozens of investigators from the Historical Case Unit and Major Crimes Branch, and over 100 officers from various units across the province assigned to ensure this investigation remained a priority. For the, uh, for the Saskatchewan RCMP. Bringing some sense of closure to Misha's family and holding an individual responsible was at the core of the motivation behind each investigator assigned to this case. I am immensely proud of the countless hours and diligent work of this core team, 
not one gave up and each investigator continued to persevere when challenges arose, the biggest being the passage of time. We have explored every investigational avenue and gathered enough evidence to bring this case to charges. The public will now be able to see this case and its details unfold through the court process. I know this morning's announcement will generate a lot of conversations between the individuals who were at Regina Beach on Last Mountain Lake 17 years ago. What I hope is that this encourages people to continue to speak up. Even though this file is before the court, our investigational work has not concluded. We are still looking to those individuals who were used at the time of Misha's death or anyone who may have information about that night to call and report it to a member of the Saskatchewan RCMP Historical Case Unit by calling 639-625-4426. This information can help support evidence we already collected and validate information we have already received. Lastly, on behalf of the Saskatchewan RCMP, I would like to thank the public and our media agency partners for their continued interest and commitment to spreading awareness of this investigation through their reporting. This support over the past 17 years assisted the work of our investigators to identify the person responsible and provide Misha's family the answers required to help their healing journey. Thank you. Merci. Avant de commencer, j'aimerais prendre quelques instants pour souligner la présence de M. Pavlik et saluer la mère de Misha, Susan Martin, et à la sœur de Misha, Kathleen Marshall. Je ne peux pas imaginer à quel point ces 17 dernières années ont été difficiles alors que vous attendiez des réponses après le décès tragique de Misha. Merci pour votre force et votre coopération au fil des ans qui ont fait partie intégrante de l'enquête. Comme bon nombre d'entre vous le savent peut-être, le groupe des affaires non résolues de la GRC de la Saskatchewan enquête sur l'homicide de Michel, Misha Pavlik, 19 ans, survenu le 21 mai 2006 dans un terrain de camping près de Regina Beach sur le lac Last Mountain. La question, qui a tué Misha Pavlik, a honté beaucoup de gens alors que la famille, les amis, et le public et les enquêteurs cherchait à l'obtenir justice. Depuis, les enquêteurs se sont engagés à travailler avec diligence pour procéder à une arrestation dans cette affaire, porter des accusations et tenir quelques, quelques responsables du décès de Misha. À ce jour, les enquêteurs et les spécialistes de la GRC ont mené plus de 200 entrevues avec des témoins, recueilli des éléments de preuve et examiner les liens du crime. L'enquête a fait la une des journaux partout en Saskatchewan et a fait l'objet de tout premier balado de la GRC en tant que tentative novatrice de faire connaître l'enquête et de solliciter toute information que quelqu'un pourrait avoir. Le samedi 24 juin 2023, un homme de 34 ans a été accusé d'un chef de meurtre au deuxième degré, en contravention du paragraphe 235.1 de la Code criminel, et a, été, et, a, et a été arrêté à Regina par les enquêteurs du groupe des affaires non résolues de la GRC de la Saskatchewan sans incident. Il doit comparaître une deuxième fois dans le cours provincial de la jeunesse à Regina le 17 juillet 2023. Étant donné que l'accusé était une jeune au moment d'infraction, nous ne sommes pas en mesure de divulger son nom, ni d'autres informations qui pourraient l'identifier. Tout au long de l'enquête, le groupe des affaires non résolues de la GRC de la Saskatchewan a reçu l'aide d'enquêteurs de la section des enquêtes générales de la GRC de Regina, du groupe de crimes graves, et du crime organisé de la police fédérale, d'enquêteurs de la GRC de la Saskatchewan dans le cadre d'opérations de surveillance, ainsi que l'agent des détachements de la GRC de Lumsden, de White Butte, de Carlisle 
et de Pelican Narrows. Le GRC en Alberta a également apporté son aide. À ce jour, des dizaines d'enquêteurs du groupe des affaires non résolues et de l'équipe des crimes majeurs de la GRC de la Saskatchewan, ainsi que plus de 100 agents de divers groupes partout en Saskatchewan, ont été affectés pour veiller à ce que l'enquête demeure une priorité pour la GRC de la Saskatchewan. On espère que ça va permettre à la famille de Misha de tourner la page et de tenir une personne responsable. C'est ce qui a motivé chaque enquêteur affecté à cette affaire. Je suis immensément fier des innombrables heures et du travail assidu à cette équipe. Personne n'a abandonné cette enquête et chaque enquêteur a persévéré malgré les difficultés. La plus grande défi étant le temps qui passe. Nous avons exploré toutes les pistes d'enquête et recueilli des preuves pour porter cette affaire devant les tribunaux. Le public pourrait maintenant connaître les détails de l'affaire tout au long de la procédure judiciaire. Je sais que l'annonce de ce matin suscitera beaucoup de discussions parmi les personnes qui étaient présentes à Regina Beach sur le lac Last Mountain il y a 17 ans. Ce que j'espère, c'est que l'annonce encouragera plus de personnes de fournir de l'information. Même si le dossier est devant le tribunal, le travail d'enquête n'est pas terminé. Nous sommes toujours à la recherche des personnes qui étaient jeunes au moment du décès de Misha ou de toute personne qui pourrait avoir des informations sur cette nuit-là. Vous pouvez communiquer directement avec les enquêteurs du groupe des affaires non résolues en comparaisant le 639 625-4426, où on transmet l'information de façon anonyme par l'entremise d'échecs au crime. Ces informations pour aider à étayer les preuves que nous avons déjà recueillies ou à valider les informations que nous avons reçues. Enfin, au nom de la GRC de la Saskatchewan, je tiens à remercier le public et les agences de presse partenaires de leur intérêt et de leur engagement soutenu pour faire connaître cette enquête dans leur reportage. Cette aide cumulative au cours des 17 dernières années a permis aux enquêteurs d'identifier la personne responsable et de fournir aux familles de Misha les réponses nécessaires pour les aider dans leur cheminement vers la guérison. Merci. J'invite maintenant Maintenant, Mr. Pavlik, a deal Kokomo. I now invite Mr. Pavlik to provide a statement. Sir. Well, I'm here on behalf of uh, my son, Misha William Pavlik. And uh, I'm representing his mother. Sarah, Susan, and Sister Kathleen, and my wife Karen is here. So, 6,246 sounds like a large number, right? Well, 6,246 is the days between Misha's death and today. On behalf of the family, I want to express our sincere and grateful thanks to the RCMP Major Crimes and Historical Case Unit. Always respectful, always hopeful. They never stopped communicating with us, sharing what they could. So many of them offering their commitment, courage, and humility, and sometimes frustration, but only rarely. <clears throat> the units and other members in the RCMP exemplify a basic core social value. Together we can. Together we can. 
prioritizing the greater good and the concept of common welfare and safety. We, the family, we realize this is not the end, just the beginning of the end. And it renews our hope for justice for our dear Misha. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Pavlik, for your touching words. Uh, we'll now open the floor to our news agency partners for a 20-minute questions and answer period. Please line up at the microphone uh, should you have a question. Merci, Mr. Pavlik. Nous allons maintenant donner la parole aux agences du presse partenaire pour une période de questions de 20 minutes. Veuillez faire la file derrière le microphone ici. 20-minute questions and answer period. Sergeant Major Milo, welcome to join Hi there, Brandon Harder from the Regina Leader Post. Uh, just wondering if the individual charged is facing any additional charges or is it the one charge? At this time, it's just the one count of, of murder, section 235, sub one. Okay, and uh, when did the individual first appear on this charge in court? His first appearance was yesterday in Regina Provincial Court. Uh, hi, Catherine Ludwig with Global News. Um, was there any specific evidence or anything along that lines that led to this individual in this arrest? Unfortunately, I can't get into the specifics of what evidence brought us here today. Uh, I can say it was cumulative over the last 17 years as we continue to gather evidence, uh, continuing with investigation, encouraging people to come forward, using tools such as the podcast that resulted in nearly 20 people uh, contacting us to provide additional statements from what occurred and what they may have provided 17 years ago. So he didn't come forward himself? The individual who's been charged? No, he did not. Okay, thank you. I'm handing my phones towards you. Sure. Thank you. Do we need to translate that? No, thanks. No? no? Okay. Hi, Jeremy Symes with the Canadian Press. Can you say if this individual was a, a young man as well? Well, he was a youth at the time. Uh, he was 17 years old at the time. So uh, beyond that, I really can't explain that much better. Okay. And um, was, I know you can't speak to the evidence too much. I understand that. Did the tips that come that came to this were from people at the party? Was that where lots of this evidence came from? To be honest, I'm not privy to exactly what was provided in those in those last 20 tips uh, after the podcast was aired. Um, I know there has been some more willingness of people to come forward and provide information about what they did know at the time. That party that occurred on on that on that night was a grad party. There were younger people there. Uh, it's possible that maybe some of them were reluctant to, uh, to provide information when they themselves were 17, 18 years old. And now 17 years later, uh, maybe have that, that more sense of urgency or, or inclination to do what they feel is right. Yeah, just to follow up on that, just that willingness um, all these years later, can you just expand on that? Uh, I really can't expand on it. Like, uh, I can't speak for the individuals who, who have been coming and talking to the investigators. So it's a question, unfortunately, we can't ask them or you can't ask them. And it's a question that I can't answer either. Um, I guess I'll just ask, uh, is this individual currently in custody then? No, he's, he's not in custody. He made his first appearance yesterday. Uh, and he'll be making his second appearance on July 17th, and he is not in custody. Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, just another one. But what's this like for you personally to get to this point? You know, it's 17 years later. Th that is such a difficult question to answer, and I appreciate it. Um, I have not myself been that active in investigation. I oversee the investigators in the unit. Uh, 
when he was arrested, the individual was arrested, and the termination, the charges would be laid. I saw the emotion that they were experiencing, and it was such a wide array of emotions, uh, not just relief or, or, or joy. It was, there was a lot of people who were solemn. Uh, a couple of them spoke to Mr. Pavlik themselves and Misha's mother as well, relayed some of the emotion they felt. Um, and then the comment was made that the historical case unit in Saskatchewan has 162 active files that we are investigating, 90 of which are homicides uh, or suspicious missing persons. And the emotions that those 162 families would also feel when they hear the news that this case has resulted in charges, uh, questions about their loved ones and what is being done. I'm sure there's some joy that, and comfort that they find when they hear that we've laid charges in Misha's case, but there, there's probably some, some other emotions, some negative emotions that they feel as well, uh, wondering what's going on with their family's cases, and we can't share all that information. Um, sorry, I, I realize you can't speak uh, <clears throat> too in depth to the investigation. I'm just wondering, like, was there a period of time here where um, I guess not much was being gleaned by investigative efforts, and then, then there was a turning point where, where there was a, a, a great flurry of information that came in all at once. I know you mentioned the podcast. Can you kind of, can you describe for us, you know, was there, was there a real turning point for, for you folks? I wouldn't describe it as a turning point. I would describe it as uh, additional information continued to come in, uh, whether it's being whether that from people coming forward more often, uh, additional investigators looking at the information, putting things together, taking additional investigative steps. Uh, there certainly is ebbs and flows to the investigation. There's times when it looks bleak uh, and, and members are frustrated and they rely on their, we rely on their determination and their perseverance to get through to where we are today. How long was this individual a suspect in the investigation? don't think I should answer that question just based on it being before the courts now. Uh, so I'd probably just leave it at that. Sorry. Uh, Alexander Kwan with CBC. Uh, can you tell us uh, what role the, the podcast played, if any, uh, in this investigation? Yeah, the, the podcast was such a unique tool, investigative tool that that the RCMP, or as far as I know, any police force has ever used. Uh, it just allowed us to reach further and make those emotional contacts with Mr. Pavlik being involved and, and getting to tell his side of the story and investigators discussing some of, of their thoughts and ideas uh, throughout this. Uh, it just allowed us just to take that extra step. It was such an important tool that we, we were able to use. But as far as specifically the evidence that was gleaned from it, uh, I, A, I can't talk about it, and B, I'm not really aware of that myself either. And just to clarify, you mentioned that you had received tips after the podcast. Uh, are you able to tell us how many you received after yes, that? Yes, uh, I know within the first two weeks of the podcast being aired, uh, 15 people contacted uh, information with anonymous tips. Three went through Crime Stoppers, and an additional three contacted investigators personally to talk. Just wondering if the Pavlik family wanted to take any further questions or expand on how you feel today or talk about Misha or whatever. I know it's difficult, so you may not, but. Uh... time for one or two more questions so I'll open the floor for one or two more questions here before we wrap up thank you uh, Nicole Garm with 980 CJME um, I was just wondering if you could speak to it took over 6,000 days to get here um, and why maybe it took so long again that's a, a, a difficult question to ans uh, answer from my knowledge of the file I, I think just based on the circumstances surrounding the event that night that resulted in Misha's death um, 
it was a grad party. It was night. There was several people there. I think in excess of well in excess of a hundred or more. Um, I think, from my understanding, age probably pay, played a factor as well. Uh, when you're 17, when you're 18, you're maybe friendship is more important than anything. Uh, and as people get older, priorities in life change. Experiences change them. Uh, so I think that really was ultimately what brought us here today. Uh, do you know anything about the motive? That is something that will come out during the court case, so we'll just leave it at that. That's not something I can discuss with you, sorry. Nope, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Major Milo. That con concludes our event today. Thank you for your participation, for your diligence in reporting on this, invest this important investigation. Voyez le conclu l'événement. Merci à tous de votre participation et votre diligence dans vos reportages sur cette importante enquête. If you have any additional follow-up questions, please contact the Saskatchewan RCMP Media Relations Team. Si vous avez d'autres questions, veuillez communiquer avec l'équipe de, des relations avec les médias de la GRC de la Saskatchewan. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.